Okay, now let's start this webinar. Uh, good morning and welcome you all in this AI 900 session. Archie this said, I'm a host for this session. Guys, if you have any question and queries, please put question on the uh, chat box. We will be there to help you out. Now moving ahead and talking about our event sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is an India one of kind co porting running solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question, we Bruce Road offering and also give comprehensive advice advisory service to client who wish to modernize their program. We also educate, adv advise and implement and manage. Then the synergetic solution offering that is persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add-on solution, certification solution, certification add-on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre-sales training solution, practice playbook solution and architecting solution. Then what does Microsoft certification does? It will give you complete learning experience. You will get trained to build food appear for the exam and get certified. Uh, this is skilling journey here. You can advance yourself. First, you have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced role based certification and expert level certification. In fundamental level certification, we are providing you AZ 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900, SC 900. In associate level certification, we are providing you many types of certification. That is uh, 104, uh, 204, AZ 500, and uh, here you can see on my screen. In expert level certification, we are providing you AZ305, SC100, PL600, and AZ400. Also, we have special certification that is AZ120, AZ140, and AZ220. If you want any certification, you can connect with us. I already share contact details on chat box. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. Also, we do provide certification add-on, onboarding add-on like short duration modules and more. Then moving ahead, to, then moving ahead, today training is organized and handled by the ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. Under ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Then Azotic community for Punekas. Emerging Technology Community for Suratkas, Azure Tech Community for Pune Nagpurkas. Guys, you just have to install the Meetup app and you can uh, follow our communities there. Then you have to follow Code of Conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note, uh, participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Then uh, today's speaker for this training is Mansi Sahane. She is a Microsoft certified trainer and currently work with Synergetics as a trainer consultant. Agenda for this webinar, you will get know more about the topic and benefit of it. In one day webinar, we are providing you full day workshop. Uh, then coming with the self learning plan, we are providing you complimentary learning achievement best. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated best. Then mentoring and exam prep session. If you have any question, you can submit your question on our feedback form. Then coming coming with the knowledge assessment. Before end of this session, we are providing you assessment link. You can give your uh, exam and test your knowledge. Here you can see AI, we are providing you AI 900 learning achievement badge. Uh, we already mentioned the step on screen. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Make sure guys you follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for upcoming webinar uh, update and information. Uh, thank you. Now I would like to hand over this mic our speaker. She will continue ahead. Thank you, Archie. A very good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this one day webinar on AI 900. So before we get into the session, I want to give you all an overview of what we are going to learn uh, in today's session. And um, uh, Archie, am I audible? Yes. Archie? Okay, great. So yeah, so I'm going to give you an overview of what we are going to do. It's not a training training session because we, can't, we don't have much time to go in depth I can't help you with the 
demos or anything. Okay, so we I will be teaching concepts and I will be doing some demos. Okay, so I planned some three demos to show you. And yeah, that's it. So before we get into this training, let me talk about what is AI 900 and uh, what are we going to learn. And then uh, we will move with module one. Archie, is my screen visible? Yes. Okay, great. So moving ahead. So this training is fully about AI fundamentals. Okay. We all know since uh, OpenAI has launched its models, the large language models, whether it's chat GPT or DALI or n number of models, AI has become more and more popular. It's not that AI was never there. It was always present. OK, we all know through uh, we when we go or travel somewhere, right? We you, uh, let's say you've gone to a country like Germany or France. There people generally don't speak English, right? They have their own na native language or even for us. Right, we speak Hindi, or uh, in some states they have their own regional languages. Right, whether it's uh, Punjabi, Haryanvi, Rajasthani, Gujarati, or the down south you have Malayali, Kannada, and Telugu, Tamil, etc. Right, so there we kind of face problems. Right, we don't understand their language, they don't understand our language. Right, so what do we do? We go, okay, we open this app called Google Translator or go online, search what does this mean. First type in our language and then it gets translated to whatever language you want, right? So what is that? That is nothing but AI, right? It is nothing but AI or not, not just type, you speak out. And let's say you speak in English and you want it to be translated to German language or to French language or to Spanish language, right? So that is also AI. Right. Another thing like now, nowadays, if you uh, travel to the airport, OK, normally uh, uh, there were there used to be the security, right? You had to show yourself in the camera and you have to identify yourself. You have to carry an identity card to prove that it is you. Right. But normally now what they do, they kind of capture your face. At the beginning of the airport, OK, they capture your face and next time whenever you come, you don't have to do that security and everything because your face has been captured. So through the facial features, through the facial recognition. Right, you are kind of identified. So that again is nothing but artificial intelligence. OK, so artificial intelligence is something that is not new. It is. It was discovered back in the 1960s or in the 1970s. OK. And from then it has been evolving, evolving and evolving. Right. We have we have these voice uh, command uh, machines as well, like Alexa, Google. Right. Who, uh, whatever we command that we give, they execute that command. Right. So it's not new. It is very much there, but just now why the popularity is because of open AI. So what is basically AI 900? So whenever you see a 900, okay, a uh, number 900, okay, that means it is a fundamental certification, okay, whether it's SC 900, AZ 900, DP 900, or AI 900, okay. So AI generally is the artificial intelligence certification series of Microsoft um, of Microsoft Azure. OK, so basically what we are going to do over here, we are going to see the different services related to AI on Azure. OK, there are people who don't know how to code. There are people who know how to code and coding is very important in AI. OK, so there are ways in which people who don't know how to code can also create models, train models. OK, people who know code can also do the same thing is what basically this 
thing covers. Okay, so this is what it is. We are going to see the different services. Okay, in on Azure platform using the Azure platform. Okay, pertaining to AI. So, like Archie said. Just one minute. Yeah. So, like Archie said, my name is Manasi Shahane, and I'm a trainer consultant with Synergetics for the past five years almost. And I've been training in data and AI. This is my specialty, my domain. Okay. And I am a Microsoft certified trainer. And uh, yeah, so I've been training, conducting webinars, consulting, helping people, okay, on these technologies, whether it's in data or Azure data services or AI services on Azure, okay. So now I would like to, to hear from you all, okay, because this is, like I said, we are going to learn AI services on Azure, okay. So it is required that you know a little bit about Azure, Okay, what is Azure? Um, what is uh, what is a resource group and etc. What is a subscription? So let me know in the chat box. Okay, what is your understanding of uh, what is your understanding of resource groups? Do you know about it? Do you not know about it? Because it will help me divert the webinar in that direction. Okay, so uh, I will give you all time if you all can put it in the chat box very quickly. Let me know about. Do you all know what is a resource group? What is a resource? What is a subscription? What is the difference between IAS, PaaS, and SaaS? Okay, so let me know in the chat box very quickly your name and whatever. Uh, like I asked the questions right now, so if it would be really beneficial for me. Okay, so I'm giving you all two, three minutes. Guys, please go ahead and put all these details in the chat box. Yes, guys, I'm waiting for your answer. Yes, no. Do you know what is a resource group? What is a subscription? Have, do you all have any knowledge on Azure platform? Because it is going to be vital for this training. Okay, uh, because if you don't know that, then I will have to, first of all, focus on that. Okay, and then we can proceed ahead. So let me know whether you have any understanding of these terms that I just took. Resource group, what is IAS, PaaS, SaaS, um, subscription, and etc. Okay, I can see only two people. What about the rest? Guys, there are 45 people in this chat group. Let me know. Okay. Okay, I can see that not many people know about it. Don't worry, we will be we I'll do a quick overview of that and explain it in short. Okay, before we start with module one. Okay. So moving ahead, what is basically AI 900? Okay. So uh, like I said, it is a Microsoft, I mean it's for um uh it's a fundamental this thing, okay, and this particular um Certification is uh, divided into five modules. Okay, so we are going to see five modules today. Uh, I'll just, uh, because it's like a webinar, not a training training. So I will be giving you an overview of it. We will not be going much in depth. Okay, because I have demos planned also, and we have a lot of activities as well. Okay, so um, we are going to do module one, module two uh, before the lunch break, and then the remaining three modules after that. OK, so basically um, it has five modules. OK, and uh, this is how we intend to do. These are the five modules. So very first is the introduction, very basic. OK, we are going to do the basic of artificial intelligence, what it is, what are the different workloads, etc. Then we will go on taking one more workload individually. OK, what is machine learning? What is uh, knowledge base? What is NLP? 
okay what is generative ai what is deep learning etc all of that we are going to cover in the next module so every workload has a module dedicated to it like machine learning has one module uh, deep learning has one module then generative ai has one module okay so that's what we are basically going to see and this is how we intend to go about Okay, so like we have started, so I'm going to give you a short break after we complete one module, two modules. Okay, so I'll give you a short 20 minute break. And then once that is done, we'll move to the next module. Then you'll get a lunch break of one hour. Okay, and once we come back from the lunch, we'll do some more modules. Then go again for a tea or a coffee break around four o'clock. Okay, again, 20 minute break. And then we will summarize. We will stop the session. We'll complete the last module. And then we have a assessment at the end. OK, uh, so that you all can just check your knowledge. It's not hard and fast rule that, OK, you know, you're going to excel at it. It's just a free assessment that we are giving out to you just so that you can, you know, in the future, uh, in case you want to study this, you know where and how much you need to study. OK, that is what we are. This is what we plan and then we will be ending the session. OK, as it is Saturday, I, tr I will try and uh, we'll try and complete the training or sorry, the webinar as fast as possible so that you all can enjoy the rest of the evening. OK, so this is what we plan. So this I will be talking about towards the end from where you can study. This is the learn path. OK, you can have a path customized for yourself. OK, uh, we will be uh, I will be talking about it, where to go. I will share the link as well with you all in the chat box okay <clears throat> and then of course we are i will be talking about this as well <clears throat> and like archie said we will be sharing our achievement we will be sharing a badge with you all which is like a certificate that you attended this training okay which you can share on linkedin okay with people you can add it to your resume cvs that is fine okay so we will be talking about that uh, later on, so uh, don't drop out. You this particular achievement badge that we give carries a lot of value. Okay, so in order to get that, please stay in the session. And then, of course, uh, how you can get yourself certified. I will be talking about that. I will be telling you all where you can uh, go ahead and schedule the exam once you have studied from the links that I have shared. Okay, once you think you are confident enough, you know you can appear for the exam i will be telling you all where to go and how to give it and of course what is the cost of the exam uh, a little bit about the exam i will be talking once we complete module five coming to the exam this is the distribution or the weightage like i said there are five um modules and each module you can see there is some weightage they're all equally important okay they carry the same weightage that is there so that means 15 to 20 percent you can say questions come from all the modules okay so since this is ai you know things change a little bit uh technology we all know keeps on changing so you have to be very careful uh, whenever you give the exam make sure you go again do the learn path because there are a few new updates that come in and microsoft uh, does a regular update. So I will talk about that also towards the end. OK, so this is a little bit about the AI 900 and, to, and during the training. I will uh, during the webinar, I will be talking about uh, all of this so you don't have to worry much. OK, so moving ahead, I saw that people don't know what is a resource group, what is IAS, PaaS, SAS. They are not aware about uh, um, Subscription. So let's just uh, talk about it in, I mean, just a little bit about that. I will talk. Okay. So because we will be requiring uh, this particular uh, knowledge, okay, um, when we create services on Azure, okay, we will be requiring uh, this particular knowledge. So uh, basically, we all know cloud. Cloud is nothing but, uh, you know, deploying or creating services, okay, on over the internet, okay, like services like what you can say, virtual machines. 
storage accounts. Databases, data warehouses. Okay, so these are the things that you can create. Okay, but over the internet. Okay, this is what is basically cloud computing or cloud. Now, cloud has three different services. Okay, three different services. One is your infrastructure. As a service. Now, what does infrastructure as a service or IAS mean? Okay, it is something where you get the maximum flexibility. Okay, now whenever you are creating an application or let's say even a website, right? Generally, what happens is that you require something called as servers, right? We have all heard about this term. Servers where our application apps or websites are basically running. To put it simply, okay, this is where we actually deploy or create, or this is where it is actually running our apps or websites, any company you take, okay, whether it's Google, whether it's Meta, okay, they have servers, okay, and, and on top of those servers, you have these applications or websites that are running, right? So let's say I want uh, to configure these servers, okay? Configure the physical aspect or the physical resources that I will require to in order to deploy my application or websites. I want full flexibility. I want to decide, okay, uh, what kind of what what kind of uh, um, memory size do I need? Okay, you get the flexibility to decide the memory size. What kind of a operating system? Okay, what kind of OS will you require? Whether it's a Linux OS or a Windows OS, what kind of OS you want, you decide, you get the flexibility. OK, then you decide whom to give access, whom not to give access, decide the identity and the access. OK, you know, we know that there are people who you don't want to give access to this application or to this website or to the database or to the data warehouse. Right. There can be like if it's a HR data, why give access to all the employees? You will only give it to the HR team. Right. So in that case, if you want to restrict that access, OK, you can even do that. So you have the flexibility to do that. So you decide the identity. And access. OK, so this is what is called as a infrastructure as a service. Basically, you are looking at the physical. Resources, not at the cloud side, OK, where you actually um, where your servers are actually present, okay? And where your servers are actually present is called as a region, okay? So a region is like a geographical location on Earth, okay? It's actually a location on Earth where you have these buildings full of servers, okay? It is like you have these servers, okay, that will be present in, and where it will be, it will be in a region. So as your has around 60 plus regions, okay? Now regions, what, what are they? Like you have US region, you have Australia region, you have India region, okay? That is nothing but regions. They are actual locations. If you go to that location, you will actually find servers that are being maintained by Azure, okay? So where, where you actually deploy your apps and websites, it's actually in these regions which have these servers. OK, so this is what is region in their actual location on uh, Earth. And this is where you this. So this whatever servers are there at the region, OK, it is taken care by the cloud service provider or the CSPs that we call. Top 
platform, it is CSPs. Okay, so they manage the physical requirement at the region level at the uh, yeah at the region level. But let's say you want a server where you have the flexibility. Okay, that is basically called as a virtual machine. Okay, we all know virtual machine is some is like a exact replica of your physical machine like your laptops or desktops or etc. So if you want to configure, like I said, the memory, the operating system, who should get what access, etc. Okay, then you would you're basically creating a virtual machine. So an example of IAS is nothing but a virtual machine. Okay, so VM. Clear? Now coming to platform as a service. Which is called as PaaS. Now what is platform as a service? So like I told you in IAS, you get the full flexibility to decide the physical. Uh, one second. You decide the physical infrastructure, what should be the memory size, what should be uh, the operating system and identity and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. All of this you manage, correct? So let's say you don't want that to manage. You don't want to manage the memory, how much memory it is using. Okay. You don't want to decide the operating system. All you want to focus is on configuring the application. Okay. And just the data that you put in the application. Okay, here also you can decide the data. Okay, what kind of data? Like now you have a VM and you want to um, install Python application. So it is up to you. You decide. Or a Java application. It is up to you. Okay, or you want to, you know, have multiple, like you want to create a microservice. You can do that. It is up to you. Okay, but let's say you don't want to do that also you want the cloud service provider to take care of it all you do is you configure the application okay i want it in this region i want uh the uh i want uh yeah just that and you are sorted so you don't have to worry about how much memory i need what should be the operating system or uh what should be the yeah identity access again it's in your hand OK, it's not taken care by the cloud service provider. Security is in your hand. OK, all those things come into your hand. Just the physical resources that are required or the physical infrastructure. That is required. You don't manage. It is taken care by the CSP. What you manage? Is the application what kind of like now in Azure? Okay, uh, when you create a database or a C, like we all know SQL Server, right? SQL database, SQL Server. So the equivalent service on Azure is the SQL database. Okay, this is the server. I mean, this is the database that you create. Okay, it is equivalent to the SQL Server of Microsoft. OK, so in whenever you are creating the SQL database, let's say on your local machine, you don't want to create a SQL server. OK, you don't want to install that application, install the database and then create tables. Instead, you what you do, you put it on the cloud. OK, you just decide the region. OK, and you kind of then. Create this, so this service in Azure is a pass service. OK, here you just do basic configurations of the application and then inside the database, what kind of data was you manage, you create the tables, you put in the data inside that rest is taken care by your cloud service provider. OK, so this is what basically is platform as a service and majority of the services, even your Azure. AI services or as your machine learning studio that we are going to see are all platform as a service. They are all pass in nature. 
Okay, majority of the services on Azure are generally are pass actually, except for virtual machines. Uh, uh, there is nothing that is uh, IAS. Everything is pass. Okay, so you don't know what kind of uh, operating system, memory, and uh, what is the scalability of that. Nothing you are aware about. Okay, that is taken care by your cloud service provider. Whereas here. You configure the scalability, you configure the operating system and etc. All that is in your hand. So this is IAS, then you have PaaS, okay? Then you have something called as software, as a service, which is SaaS, short form. And the classic example of SaaS is M365 or Office 365, okay? We all use this on a daily basis. Right, our Word, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, okay, Outlook, without which nobody works nowadays, right, is nothing but software as a service. So, in software as a service, okay, you kind of get it as a web, uh, like a web app or a mobile or a desktop app, right? We all have this. All you need is what you need. A license, correct, in order to use those applications. So here you just have to manage the data in what file, what are you going to type in Excel, what kind of sheets are you going to make in PowerPoint, what kind of presentations are you going to make. It's up to you. You're just using the application, right? It's not that you have created the application, you have configured the application, correct? It's not that, right? You get the flexibility to just put in the data all you need is a license if you have the license then you can use those application inside the service right you don't have to worry about what size of memory is required it is all taken care in the background okay the moment you say install the application gets installed and it is all taken care in the background right with the container and whatever those things i'm not going to go in depth but you don't have to worry about that you just have to start using the application so that is what is software as a service okay so this is the classic example even your emails or whatever that are there right this is a software as a service okay so these are the services and like i said your azure ai or azure machine learning studio that we are going to see is all basically platform as a service so the moment we i show you demos i think this concept will become more clear to you all okay now, another thing on Azure you need to know is something called as a resource. Uh, before I cover resource group, let me talk about subscription. So what is a subscription? So a subscription, we all know, like we all use OTD platforms, right? Whether it's Netflix, Amazon, Hotstar, Disney Plus, Hotstar, right? Uh, Sony Live, etc. So in order to use those um ODT platforms, we need to log in, right? Whether it's free, okay, or paid, you need to create your own uh, login ID and you need to have a trial associated or something associated to it, which actually tracks your bills. Whether it's free, so free, you don't get full services. It understands, okay, you haven't paid. So you will not, you will be shown ads. You will be uh, not, uh, you will not be able to access majority of the content, right? Only free things you can access. Whereas if you go for the paid version, you get ad free. Okay. You can access majority of the content, right? This is what is the difference. So if I want to track my billing, okay, my limit till where I can use the Azure resources. For that, we require a subscription. And subscription varies for different people. Okay, you can use a pay as you go model. You like if you are a Microsoft certified trainer as me, okay, we get this monthly uh, limit. Okay, uh, like we have a, there are different, different subscriptions even inside that. Okay, depending on what kind of, uh, whether you're a developer, whether you are an uh, administrator and etc. Okay. That also matters. So that basically determines whether you can use the Azure cloud platform or not. So without 
the subscription like i said any ott platform only free things you will get okay like for a certain period like 30 day trial or 40 day or whatever similar the same concept applies over here okay in azure you get if you are going for a free you get only 30 days of free services but not if all the services will be available to you okay then you would need to either shift to pay as you go meaning you pay the moment you any service that you want you pay immediately and you will be billed only for that okay or you go like my you purchase a subscription okay and you get that particular thing and you can use the azure platform correct so this is what is a subscription so this is what you require whenever you are deploying or creating any service on azure the second thing is called as a resource group now what is a resource group okay generally your applications okay might require uh, lots of um, different different uh, you know um things like a virtual machine or you might require a storage account you might require a database okay so let's say it's for one particular project that you are working on one particular website that you are creating or one particular application you are creating and you require all these things okay so instead of putting it across different different uh, folders let's say we put it as folders okay normally when we are working on a project what do we have a tendency of like i have a tendency you know to keep everything related to one thing inside one folder like now if i'm training on ai 900 okay i tend to keep all my demos all my presentations okay all my uh, videos or whatever material related to ai 900 in one folder right so that's what you also do if you're working on a project okay which requires this thing you which requires this thing so rather than scattering it across 10 different folders you put it into one folder so it's the same thing with your applications or your websites that you create okay let's say you want vms you want storage accounts you want um a uh, database okay rather than putting it dif at different locations or or not location i would say folders or containers okay you can group it into one and that group is called as a resource group so a resource group is like a logical container okay where you can put your as your resources whether it's a web app whether it's a virtual machine storage account database okay group it at one location or group it in one container right so that is what is that is what is a logical container so i am actually doing the basics because you are going to need it otherwise this is going to be an ai training uh, ai webinar only but when we do the demo i don't want people asking me what is a resource group what is this what is that so earlier only i had asked people whether they know or have the knowledge of this or not if you are not from that background you do need to know this without which you can't create services on azure so that is why i'm spending a little time on this okay so this is what is basically a resource group so let me know guys if you have any questions up till now this is what you need to know in terms of azure so if you have any questions here please let me know yes guys any questions okay so i take it as a no and let's proceed ahead so now we are going to start with module 1 okay so before we start with module 1 i would like to understand from your end what is your understanding of ai what do you what is your definition of ai if you can put it in the chat box it would 
very quickly. Let me know what is your understanding of AI? Uh, what is AI to you? Yes, guys. Okay, great. So that means majority of you all know what is AI and we all know that it has become very popular nowadays, right? It is very critical and AI is only and only going to grow. It has an immense future ahead, okay? With lots of companies, now since generative AI has come in, lots and lots of companies have got into this rat race of staying ahead in the game of AI, okay? So... In mod, so now we're going to start with module one. So module one basically is just going to talk about the fundamentals of AI. Like just do a quick overview of AI. What is AI? What are the different workloads? Okay, within AI. So before we start, let me just you know before we do come back to this presentation, I will just go back to the uh, notepad. Okay, I think it, I can explain it better through that. So you guys have given me absolutely perfect answers on what is artificial intelligence. Okay, so basically to put it in simple words, okay, artificial intelligence is something that is uh, used or it is, um, let's say, um, just one minute. So to put it simply, artificial intelligence, AI, is nothing but, a, let's say, a set of tools, okay? Sorry, set of tools that are used Okay, for two things. Okay, that are used for two things. One is for inferences. Okay, to infer, to get the, you know, insight to your data, to make out what is this data actually doing. Right? How am I? Uh, what can I? What can I infer from this data? Whether I'll get a loan or not. Where? What is the car price of the? of this model or whatever, okay? So if I have to do that, okay, I can infer the data and for that we use the AI tools. Now the second thing where we use AI is for predictions, right? We all know we use it for predictions, whether a person is diabetic or not, whether the person will get loan or not, right? Whether, what is the car price? This, these are the, this, this, okay, this is the size, this is the height and et cetera. This is the weight. Based on that, we then determine or predict the car price. So what is that? That is nothing but predictions. Now, if I want to find about these two things, how do I do it? AI basically says, okay, I am, I, I am a set of tools that will help you infer the data and make predictions out of that data. But how do I do it? How do I infer the data or how do I predict that a person will be, is diabetic or not? Okay, and since we know for the past two years, there's this COVID disease that came in, whether that person has COVID or not, how do we come to know? Okay, for that, we need to use something called as a AI models. Something called as the AI models. Now, what is AI models? So, AI models, to put it simply, okay, is a statistical representation 
world process. Okay, it is nothing but a statistical representation because I'll be honest, like whenever you work with AI, okay, AI has statistics, it has mathematics that you need to know. Okay, it uses math and based on math itself, okay, it helps you find out, infer the data and predict. Okay, so AI models are nothing but that. Okay, when you say you train a model, when you say you deploy a model, etc., it is nothing but using the statistics behind it. Okay, so for example, let me just give you an example. I think it will be more clear through that example. Let's say I am buying a new house. Okay, I just open paint. So let's say I'm buying a new house. Okay. And I want to do a survey, okay, that, okay, let's say um, this is the size of the house. We all know we measure the size of the house in square meters, right, or square feet or whatever, okay. So I want to do a survey and determine, okay, for this is square feet or this is square meter, what is the price? And also in which city is that house in? Okay, for example, let's say I have information. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take. Let me just increase the font size. So let's say I have the information square feet. Okay, and then I have the information about the city in which it is okay where the house is located and finally the i want to predict the price so based on this data i will infer okay what will be the price okay this is what i basically want to do let's say like because i want to buy a house i want to see i want to do a comparison okay based on the city based on the square feet what is the price Okay, so let's say I I have done a survey. Okay, so 100, one second. Let me just increase the font size. So let's say it's 100. Sorry. Yeah, so let's say it's 100 square feet. Okay, and the city is Mumbai. Okay, so the price is let's say one crore or one CR, I would say simply is one CR. Okay, now what I do, I take for another square feet. Okay, let's say 200. Okay, again the city is let's say Mumbai. Okay, and I find out that. The price is 2 CR. Okay, it is 2 CR. Now, what have I done for 100 square feet Mumbai? I came to know it is 1 CR. For 200 square feet Mumbai, again, it is 2 CR. Now, let's say I want to predict, okay, I want to predict what will be the price for 300 square feet again in Mumbai. What is going to be the price of that house how will i come to know so can you tell me what will be the price of the house if the square feet is 300 and the city is mumbai can you tell me can you predict the output for me can you estimate the price can you put it in the chat box guys Absolutely right. And how did you come to this conclusion? That it is going to be not, not this, but it is going to be 3 crore or 3 CR. How did you come to this conclusion? What did you use?
can I say that we used a simple mathematical formula? We used statistics to predict. Okay, if for hundred it was one CR, two hundred it was two CR. So for three hundred it will be three CR, right? So what was this? It was nothing but statistics. So this is nothing but a AI model. This is nothing but AI. Okay, so an AI is doing nothing else but just using statistics, using maths to predict or infer your data. So to put it simply, this is what basically artificial intelligence does. Clear? Now, when we come to artificial intelligence, okay. So this, I told you, okay, AI models and there are multiple AI models. Okay, there is one big question that always comes to us. What is AI? What is ML? What is deep learning? And what is now this new thing that is Gen AI? What is this? What is the difference between the three? I mean, all, all of these terms that are there. What is what? How do we come to know? So let's understand the difference between these three. Okay. Between all these things. Okay. So I'll again switch to this. So when we say AI, okay, AI is basically the boss. Okay. It is something that we use, like we talked about right now. Okay. So this thing that you see, okay. This is nothing but AI. This is nothing but AI. So the bigger box is nothing but AI. Now you might be thinking, what is machine learning? Where does this come? So to put it simply, like if, even if you go online and you search, they say machine learning. <laughs> is nothing but a subset of AI, which is true. Machine learning, again, the definition is the same as AI, but just it uses something like algorithms, okay? The um, training and everything is a little different, okay? But it is ultimately a AI. It is, again, a model or a workload of AI, and it is a part of AI. So this big circle that you see, I'll just change the color, put it to green, okay, is called as machine learning. This is ML. So machine learning is like, again, tools that you use to perform prediction and inference and all of that. So the ultimate goal is this only, but just it is a different way, okay, of uh, uh, using like different way in which you predict the outcome, okay. Then we have something called as deep learning, okay. So what is deep learning? I will be talking about it shortly, but just to give you an overview, okay, it is nothing but Something that uses the concept or how our brain functions, right? Exactly using that, it will uh, create models, train models, okay? The way our neural networks work, which is not a much, which is not available in machine learning. Machine learning is full of stats, okay? It uses full of statistics like sigmoid functions or our lines like y is equal to mx plus c, all those statistics come into machine learning, but that is not the same in deep learning. Deep learning uses the way our biological neural networks work, okay? But it uses the concepts of machine learning, of training, supervision, of classification, of regression, which we will be seeing, okay? So deep learning becomes a subset of machine learning. This is your deep learning. Okay, this is deep learning. Right. 
And now, finally, what is Gen AI then? So, like I said, the, so it's all, you know, basically, it's all a part of AI. Okay. You hear machine learning, you hear deep learning, you learn Gen AI, you hear, sorry, Gen AI. It is nothing but ultimately all require math statistics. Okay. In order to predict or infer data. That's the ultimate goal of artificial intelligence. Okay. So Gen AI now falls into the category. It is again a part over here which uses, again, different way of learning, training model, deploying and creating model. Okay, so that is what is Gen AI. So Gen AI, we know it has LLMs, it has a large language model for text, large image models for images, Dali, chat GPT for text, etc. So it is a part of, it is a subset of, you can say deep learning, okay, but ultimately they are all part of AI, okay. So don't get confused when people say, okay, machine learning is nothing but this, deep learning is nothing but this. It is ultimately all artificial intelligence, okay. So when we talk about artificial intelligence, Artificial intelligence has multiple workloads. Okay, so we are going to talk about those workloads. The very first workload is machine learning itself. Okay, where, well, like I said, you use statistics, you use mathematics to train model, deploy models. Okay, then you have um ml um you can say um nlp natural language processing okay short form nlp just one minute yes one minute 